Great, great, great. So this is my first ever YouTube, and I wanted to make sure I did it on this platform. YouTube is now live. Yeah, we're now live on YouTube, so I might need to like just send a link, just check to make sure that it's coming across on all platforms. Probably. If you guys are needing me to do yours for you, I cannot do yours for you unless if you don't have all your information. I cannot guarantee that you'll be enrolled just because, you know, it still it still is a process. And if I'm gonna do anybody's for anybody, I can do charge a hundred dollars. <laughs> that's cheaper than mine, right? Uh, and that's me doing. I charge a hundred dollars to do the research for you, but you still have to give me some names. You said I need your grandparents' names, date of birth, and maybe the city that they were born in to start off. And I need their well, parents' well, names. Well, well, this is okay. So I'm doing a show I'm here, my and, and my sister is Sonya casting on her her Facebook, so she's already up and running. But I'm just gonna go ahead. Hey, Shanisha. I'm gonna go ahead share the link. Um, to my Facebook real quick, and I'll send it to you, sister, if you want to, um, I don't know if you want to back out or anything on yours. Step one. This is your right to it. Hold on, hold on, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Hold on. We're going to do this in order. This, they will be okay. They wait 400 years. They will be all right. Now, I wanted to start by telling the story, because this is part of the journey. Um, my sister and I decided, um, you know, one year that we didn't want to celebrate Thanksgiving, the way everybody else is always all over um, the internet. They're all over. Um, you need for your My card is in. Oh, okay. We'll do that later. But it's because your address on you don't want to do that. All right. So essentially, one year we decided that we're not going to celebrate uh, Thanksgiving. We never really celebrated it anyway, did we? So we said, okay, we're going to go down and visit our great aunt who was just turning 90. So, all right, I just have to let some people know we're live. So basically, um, we decided we weren't gonna go. So we went to a part of Kansas that our family is very much known for, and um, we went to go visit our great aunt. So we are just talking, sitting at, the, sitting at the feet of our elders. And so she said, well, um, you know, those Indian people came to see me and we were like, no, great aunt, we don't know what you're talking about. She said, yeah, they said I have money and land I need to claim. So she was just very much like, um, so she was very much like, you know, they came to see me, get, you know, talk about the big, so we were like, okay, which nation? She said, I don't know, it started with a C. So we're thinking, okay, four out of five civilized tribes start with a C, it could either be Chickasha, Choctaw, Creek, Wiscobie, Cherokee, and then we know the other one is Seminole. So we went immediately and talked to our cousins. Now, take that further back. Our mother always told us that we were Indian. When we used to drive up and down the roads in Oklahoma and we would see that red clay, she would always remind us that we the Indians. That's how she would say, you know, we the Indians. Anytime they would tell us about stuff in school, talking about history, any Native American, she was just like, oh, yeah, you know, well, we the Indians. So that was our thing. So when we heard this from our great aunt, it wasn't that far fetched. It wasn't our first time hearing it because we had a really close relationship with our mother. And so we talked to our cousins. We called one of our first cousins that was down there, which is a little bit more connected. And she just kind of told us that, um, yeah, we're working on it. Like, I was like, what they was not going to tell us, were they? They just wasn't gonna no. tell. <laughs> and we did not go down there that year. And this was what, 2018? Yeah. 2018. They would have nobody would have called us and said anything. It was like 20, 2019. Uh, it was like right before COVID. But it was 2018 because I went to Okay, okay, we'll say 20. Oh, okay, 2019. Yeah, it was also 2018. Okay, so around that time. So that's how long. So immediately we was like, that side of the family's not much help. We went into um, my great aunt's brother's grand, uh, children and grandchildren. And they were like, yes, we are Muskogee. And so she taught us how to fill out the paperwork. So I wanted, I don't know, I was gonna pull up some of the tribal registration paperwork. Um, for those that are tuning in on YouTube, they can see it and then I'll pull it up. Well, I also sent a lot of the links. Oh yeah, you did. Here's the thing. Yeah. We, we went through Cherokee, but it's important to know what tribe you want to start off first? That is the step, the first step. Mm -hmm. What tribe do you think? Even if you're just guessing, because we we were going the Creek route and then we ended up doing Cherokee because we're also Creek. 
We're also Cushada out of Louisiana. Mm-hmm. We're also Choctaw if we go back more in the 1800s. But we want, we, you have to know which tribe, that's the first step. Which tribe does your family... Yeah, what have you heard? You got to talk. This is where you got to start talking. Like we were saying, yeah. talking to your elders, okay? Oprah, I'll send you all the different tribes. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to start with this and the one I know most. Okay. So, one, talk to your grandma. Talk to your grandma about the, her parents' names. At least get the date of birth. If you may not get the year, at least get the birthday. That's important because if you want to do your Ancestry.com research. I'm not talking about the DNA. Every time I tell someone Ancestry.com, they go take a DNA test. I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm not talking about the DNA test. I'm talking about Ancestry.com and putting in your grandma's name. Like, first of all, you can start with yourself. You can put yourself in. Then it's going to have a tree. Okay, so I'm, I'm on my broadcast, I'm going to shoot over so they can see the form. This is called the uh, Cherokee... Uh, citizen application, Cherokee Nation citizen application. So I'm gonna go over to my okay. my people over here so they so, can see it. You need to start off with your name, then ancestry will give you your parents' names, then it's gonna give you your grandparents' names. Then you that's why you support to know your great grandparents' names because this is gonna start matching up with that. You have well, to search. Well, let's start with self. Most people don't even have their birth certificates, right? To even prove their mother and their father. You got to start with self. You got to get a long form birth certificate. You from cannot state. use a short form. Long form is different than short form. Short form just says, I was born this day, my mom and my daddy, and that's it. Long form is going to say, the day you were born, your mama's name, your daddy's name, your mama's age, your daddy's age, the hospital may even have the doctor sign, and it's going to have the name of the hospital, the doctor may even have signed on it. <laughs> the original birth certificate, you have to have your long form birth certificate. Step two. Okay, so I want to go back about the birth certificate. Your father's name, that state, that long form matters. Cherokee Nation only it, it just only accepts original documents. So if you got a copy of the long form, it's not going to work. So for me, being in Missouri, we had to go to what? Jeff Jefferson, City. City. Jefferson City. You're going to have to go up to the actual vital, vital records. records. <laughs> you got to go in there. Now, from there... And due to COVID, some people are sending in long form birth certificates. You have to check your city and state because I was able to get Dylan's from Kansas City off the of internet for Maggie. Yeah, so it's the internet. So vitalcheck.org. Dot whatever. And check it. <laughs> V-I-T-A-L-C-H-E-K.org. They need to give us a sponsorship because that's money in the bank. Now, that's where, when she's talking about the, the fees, so my fees, Oprah's her fee for a service, but my fees are, of course, my my um service but also y'all need i want to already have that money so when i gotta pay to have things mailed off um i already have it in part of my retainer for doing your genealogy speaking of advertisement lila's wearing an x-black bee dress exclusively made by me here's our original x-black bee logo commercial break commercial break i'm doing my camera i designed this design from the lips to the font to the dress there that was a quick commercial break. That they- I have a wonderful relationship to your real family members. So if, if you're saying, I'm going through my grandpa's side, then somehow you need to say, okay, well, my, my grandpa is my mama's daddy, so you need to show, you need to show uh, lineage through whoever you're trying to prove up to. So if you're saying, my uncle is already registered, then you need to show that you are your uncle's nephew. You need to prove wh- whoever is registered or whoever you think is registered, prove up to them. Go get your long, long form birth certificate for yourself. And then let's say that's your mama brother. Go get your mama's birth certificate that shows. And then you can use their tribal number and say, hey, my mom has the same mom and dad as my uncle who's already registered. You know what I'm saying? So whoever, so this is why it's important to check the doll's roll to see if your great great grandparents did it. If you have someone in your family who's already registered in that tribe, then try your best to prove you're related to that person. Talk to them, see if you can get their registration number. And then when on you when you're on your application when you apply list their name and their application number and then show documents proving I'm related to that person. Yeah. As long as you can prove relations um, to that person, that should work. You don't where you don't have to go back to the 1800s like we had to do. What if state can I locate the, their birth certificate? My grandfather is from the poor poor area of Mississippi. Um, they also have Indian archives, right, Lila? Yeah, so I was going to try to show all that on my feed. So essentially, so I want to make sure, say the question again. She's saying that her grandpa is, her grandma's from a poor, poor, Dawes Road, D-A-W-E-S-R-O-L-L. 
And you can find that at okhistory.org or slash research slash Dawes. Like once I, if they were on the YouTube, I could just put all that I'll, stuff I'll in there. I'll post the YouTube things um, after we finish. So a lot of can show you all the links. Cause we're going to have all the different tribe links listed below. But if he's, you know, she said her, her grandma's from a very poor area of Mississippi. So a lot of areas that are rural and have not yet digitized their records, you're going to have to go to the county clerk. You're going to have to go to archival footage. So for example, our two, well, our great grandmother, was born before Oklahoma was an actual state. So we had to go to the Oklahoma uh, Preservation Society. We had to go, I had to go get her um, actual um, birth affidavit because she was born before a time that that, see we're, we're before there was any of this. Um, she was born before there was uh, birth certificates were mandated. So it was no process. So a lot of what they, they have as established in America now, you gotta do this, social security. Got All that was being rehearsed and the ex experimented with how do we keep track of the citizens? How do we do this census stuff? So you gotta kinda go back a little bit further. Some of y'all need to go to ancestry.com and I'm trying to pull up um, some stuff. So I mean, that, that would be the whole point of why I'm doing this video uh, to do it like well, that. How, how did you get her birth affidavit? So, um, Basically, that's what I'm trying to say on Ancestry.com, I was pulling up census records, I was pulling up addresses. Then one day, once I learned her, um, my great-great-grandmother's uh, doll's roll number, I just typed her name, first and last name, and her roll number on the um, internet, just typed it in. And then a, a packet came up. All kind of stuff was coming up on the internet. All this stuff was already digitized. It's all kind of Indian rolls. So... And again, the dolls roll is D A W E S. Um, this is where the Native Americans have to go and register and say, "Hey, I was affected by the Trail of Tears." And this is where we, they received the land allotments too, right? Yeah, this is where they had to register. They had to prove they were Indians. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot that they had to do. So I'm gonna. And, and, and just because the dolls took place in Oklahoma does not mean. Your family had to have been from Oklahoma. This was from what Kentucky, Georgia, Mississippi, Arkansas, Kansas. Um, they were all through the Trail of Tears coming back to Oklahoma to register. They that's just where the dolls were set up. So at. so some people were in some people were in Georgia and by the time they got to Alabama, they were just kinda like, I'm tired, that's enough. So some of them so I was going to show a little bit of Ancestry.com for people on my site um, that's on the YouTube. And I just wanted to do that because there is something called the uh, Library of Congress, the National Archives. A lot of our ancestral records are there. So I'm going to try to pull that up. Maybe I could just pull it up. I could pull up an example. So you go to the National Archives. And, you, and there's a special role for Native Americans. There's all kind of for, uh, documents. There's all kind of folders from World War II draft cards to the census. So I tell anybody, just go ahead and pay for the full service while you're doing this. You, if you're going to be a deep researcher for your family, let me see, just type in Native American dogs. You can go to national, oh, you can go to archives.gov. And I'm gonna pull this up on my YouTube. Um, let's see. So it's all in the National Archives. So for the group of people who feel like, oh, they destroyed our documents, I see that a lot of times that's in the comment section. That's not true. They told me. Why? There. So is your. So they told some. They told me. Oh well, if you have Muscogee ancestors, maybe it was destroyed in the fire in like 1906. I already knew my stuff was digitized when I called the Oklahoma Historical Preservation Society. Um, I was like, "Well, look, anyways, you know, if you get a phone call and they say, well, it might not be there because you know that place burned down, then tell them I don't care. Look, anyways. So I'm gonna go, for example." archives.org and you can go to Indian census rolls on the left hand corner like okay so you go to archives this is for the National Archives. this is the Library of Congress okay and in the search bar you can type in dolls rolls 
Or you can put in Native American, and it might be other kind of roles. I want to flip the camera over and show them. Yeah, go ahead. So, so this is the National Archives. All your our family's documentation is there. All right, and then you come over. So let me go to my let me go to my share my screen here. All right. So we're here at the National Archives. I just typed in Native Americans, Native American heritage. R research our records, American Indian records in the National Archives. Commission to the five civilized tribes. This is 1893 to 1914. I'm gonna come over, cause I wanna look up the five civilized tribes on the Dolls Roll, or maybe Indian census rolls. There's so many things. So I'm probably gonna probably just choose five civilized tribes for the Dawes. Now, the Dawes Roll, just to give some background. In 1887, they were trying to determine who's native, who's this, who's who. This United States is still fairly new. It's pretty much just 100 years at this point. So the Dawes Roll, um, you might want to keep this in mind. The way they were spelling people's names back then, they might spell Brown with an E at the end. They might spell, you know, Tom, T H O M, instead of, you know, T O M. So you got to think about it. Um, a lot of times, uh, our ancestors probably spoke different languages that were not uh, English. They probably spoke their native tongue. If you're, you remember, you're claiming Indian. So a lot of times in the census, it'll say, did they speak English? It'll say, no. Can they read and write? No. Well, they're talking about English. Maybe they spoke French. Maybe they spoke uh, Espanol. Maybe they spoke their Indian tongue. So a lot of times that's what it is. So for example, these are, so what they also got were land allotments. They got their enrollment, so they had to actually apply. They got census cards. All this is available on Ancestry.com. So once you pay for Ancestry.com, you don't have to go and get all these other documents, you're pretty much set. You're pretty much set. So final roles of the citizens, you might wanna show this real quick, right here where it says, so final roles of the citizens and freedmen of the five civilized tribes in Indian country. So I'll click there. Some people wanna search, they, they made it much easier. It used to not be this easy. You had to actually know the name of the, what you wanna look into. So for example, Cover page, the era of Chickasaw. You gotta say, okay, which one is it? Indian by blood, Indian by blood, Choctaw by blood. You got all these different roles. They had for the newborn Choctaw, for the minors, it depends on where they were. Maybe you were Choctaw by marriage, all right? Freedmen, Choctaw, Mississippi Choctaw. Anytime I ask somebody or somebody tell me they Choctaw, I already assume they're from Mississippi, down in the valley. Um, Chickasaw, <laughs> newborn, Chickasaw Freeman. All right, Cherokee, Cherokee by blood. Cherokee by blood. This is now when they start getting to the blood quantum back then, that was racist. They had no DNA science at that time to be verifying who was blood and blood by blood. So you got a lot of people who were claiming to be Native Americans, but they were actually Scottish. They were. British. British. Somebody said, please clarify what items are needed to be set when you register with accessory.com. You need to just know your parents' name and, and start there and work your way back. It'll help you compile it. It'll help you save it. When you, Sometimes you get confused with a grandmother and a great-great. So sometimes you just need to just use accessory.com to um, start your case. Then when you got your ancestors around 1893 to 1914, you need to know your ancestors' name. I can't, you have to know that. Yeah. If you want to do like, research, I can help you, but we, we need, you need to know their you names. You need to know at least your, 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 your parents' parents' names. And we, need, we do need the date of birth, and even if it's just the date and the, 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 the month, because uh, Ancestry, a lot of people have common names, and Ancestry is going to pop up and say, whatever, Geraldine Rogers. And we need to know we're clicking on the right Geraldine Rogers. Now I'm gonna show them okhistory.org. So this is where you need to toggle, you need to play around with. I'm gonna show my people um, okhistory.org. You, you, you can look on the dolls roll for their names, yes. Their names only work on the dolls roll. Uh, so you, if you see, say for instance. Show them this? Yeah. yeah, but say for instance, yeah, here's the dolls roll. Let, let, let's type in, hold on. We're gonna show you guys the, doll, the dolls roll right How now. How to search the dolls roll from 1898. You need to know your ancestors' names from 1898 
to nineteen fourteen. Yes. And then we'll, once you show, once you got that, then we'll show you what to do next. So, so do, we're gonna. I'm gonna do um Claire, David. I'm gonna do David. Do, da- do David. David. Yeah. yeah so, so this is our great great grandpa. So his name was David. He's already ready to come up. Brown. Wow. And I know he is. Uh, he was Muskogee. So I'm gonna go down to Muskogee, which is Creek and Parentheses. But if you don't know, you can you can just select search. All. Yeah. And even if you don't know his roll number here, if you don't know his roll number, well, he was the only one. He's the only one. <laughs> so they're going to say search card number 1042 because remember over here, they get into card numbers. They get into what card is he on? Y'all, it's a lot of referencing and cross-referencing. So see here, he was search card 1042. They Where tell me that right there. Oh, yeah, search card 1042. See, now you're they give you kind of going too fast. Now they giving us now I went to his card because I was looking for just David Brown, but now they're giving me David Brown's other children. They give me their role and number. And you see how they have him as a female, as his sex as a female? Yeah. How's oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Do they? Yeah, they do. Oh, they need to fix that. They do need to fix that because he's definitely that can, a man. Yeah, that could, that could fuck somebody up. Yeah, but thank goodness we didn't go through him, and this was his role number. Yeah, but that they on the cars they really don't say, so I don't know why. Yeah, but they, this is kind of this is kind of mistakes and shit that they were making back then. Yeah, look at the whole clerical error. I never even realized that. So he being three, roll number three, and they don't tell nothing about blood because that was deemed to be racist. That's what they were doing. They weren't telling us by what blood he was. Creek Freeman card number ten forty two. Freeman is the term that they use to determine who was black. Black the, the emancipated or, through or, the law. Yeah, or we only say black. Melanated. Melanated. People that were born free, free people of color called Freeman. But also, they were trying to, these, you got to remember, these are colonizers trying to enslave the Native Americans because they don't know nothing about the land. They don't know anything about um, what's over that mountain, what's the name of this river. So a lot of this stuff, um, they, they, these were Scottish people coming over. These were European, Irish people um, that they were claiming Native American ancestry. So think about this. If you are of, um, excuse me, I'm going to go back to this. So imagine this. If you are, um, I'm going back to my screen. So imagine you are American Indian and you have no rights in this country, right? You have absolutely zero rights. But you have the right to own slaves. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So they were, this is the United States government, very much covert operations, allowing this, so you got to walk on the trail of tears, but you also got slaves? Yeah, so people in this whole, with Indians own slaves. Now, do my great-grandma own a plantation? Yes. But what is a plantation? A plantation is no different than a farm. Right. So when people hear the word plantation, they're like, oh, she owns slaves. No. How she you better own, get a plantation. How she, how she you better start planting. How she own a slave and she got kicked out of her own house. <laughs> so what makes y'all think that these people had the right to own slaves and they couldn't even own their own house no more that they actually own? But you then like, um, but, but, but the United slaves. States says I can own slaves. I got the I got power of the law to own slaves. Yes. <laughs> Come on, does that make sense? No. So the United States government has only treated one group of people and one group of people wrong, and that's been the Indians. So you can call us colors. We really we physically are brown. It's like this is black. <laughs> yeah. And we're literally the brown clan. And, and, and in Kituwa teaching, Cherokee early ancient teaching says the brown people were the first inhabitants of North America, Turtle Island. The brown people. They said the black is African and we are the brown. The brown people are the first inhabitants of North America. And that's that. All right. They called the boat people that came over on boats. They called them the blue people. They called the yellow people those that came from Asia. So that's how that works. We are one people. Let's look, let, she wants us to look up Sharon. <laughs> they go over to a research right now. Sharon Sanders. And she said Brooks. Since I'm We're looking right now. I could put this link in your um in yours. So nothing nothing comes up, but here's the thing. They may be on a different role. There's other roles, correct? Mm-hmm. There might be a The a, dolls a, role is only the final the, yeah. the five civilized tribes. Yeah. And she may be on a different role or a different tribe. I don't know the list of the other roles. What's the name of the other roles? Uh, the Dunn role, the Baker role. Yeah. These are all just different roles. So I'm just trying to put the, I'm going to put the link in your chat 
so people can start playing around with it right now. You need to know your ancestor's name around that time. That's what I'm saying, y'all. That's what this is gonna be something that actually should bring people together. Should bring your families together. Somebody gotta know something. So that's the okay. So I'm gonna go back to my broadcast. Okay. So for example, um, I really want to show some of the packets. And I'm gonna be clear again, we are referring to the five civilized tribes. If you're a part of a different tribe, we don't have information about that. It may be the same process, but we can only tell you about the Cherokee Nation. <laughs> right. So I'm going to see if I can find um, one of the, I want to find one of the packets. I mean, I don't know if I still got the ancestry, the full account for it. So I'll just try to go and just pull up like some of the packets okay. or something for my audience. Once you get the names um, or, and, and you can kind of figure out what tribe you're a part of, I mean, if you really just want to skip everything and just see what happens, take a shot in the dark, then say, okay, I might be shocked all. Just send in whatever, and then let them send you back the information saying, hey, we need this, we need that. They're going to see your check a check box, paper sheet. So say, hey, we need this, we need that, we need this. You don't only look at me and see if I'm looking at your ancestry.com. I don't work. know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Me and Lala be having wars over this ancestry account. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where I like to keep my research so when I need to go back. So I'm going to, um, let's see. I'm, going to, I'm trying to show them an example um, at, without showing too much. So I'm going to show my people what, look, we here, we might as well get it going. All right, so for example, I'm gonna go to my tree. I don't know if I have my full account up right now. So uh, she, she meant to put okhistory.org slash research. You put research.org. Oh, okay. Let it's me, okay history. Let, let me do it again. Let me yeah, delete. do it again. She meant to put okay history. Okay, I'm gonna delete it. Okay. Okay, Sorry about that. So let me show you guys how Ancestry, how it's easy, it may be helpful to find your family this way. Oh, let me. If you don't know really too much names. What? what? I need to zoom in a little bit. Here we go. Yeah, you can zoom in. At the, yeah. Okay. Over. Oh, God. See how far back I went? <laughs> so, okay. Here. Where's your name? No, you just started with my else's. Okay. So this is. Our great grandmother. We know, we do know this. Claire is our great grandmother. Oh, we was going through. I was going too far. I was doing somebody else's stuff. Okay. All fine. right. So I'm gonna go to Sevilla. And that's our great great grandmother. This is who we linked our Cherokee through. Was her. So I'm just showing this to y'all because y'all gonna have to start doing a lot of Census Bureau work. You're gonna have to um, look up at cross reference because a lot of people like some people have common names. So you're gonna be thinking, oh. Um, you're gonna be thinking, wait, let me just, you can get back off. Let me go back off the screen. So let me do some more. So, oh, wait, wait. so Sevilla is our great great grandmother. We could have went through her husband, David Brown, the Creek route, or we could have went through Sevilla, the Cherokee route. We decided to go through Cherokee. Why did we decide to go through Cherokee? Well, this is what happened. So I'm very much into the matriarch. And so for me, it was not enough just to know the mother of the mother of the mother. I needed to know the mother of that mother. If, if I could go far back. So when I was looking at uh, um, Clara, my great grandmother, I said, oh, so she's Muskogee, I get it, I see her father's Muskogee. So I opened up her card a little bit more and saw mother, mother's Cherokee, father was Muskogee. So I said, whoa, I could go back a little bit more. And uh, we need to go through Creek because Cherokee is a larger nation. We just feel like it's way bigger. and. It did take, I'm not going to lie, um, we started this back in 2019. It took a lot almost a year. It took me, I, I had to start all over again. So I started in February of doing my paperwork, and I just finished in July. Imagine this. We got some people, we have people that um, are really good at researching, right? They're really good at researching, but... They don't know anything about their family. They know things about Kemet. They can find things about uh, Ubuntu civilization. They can tell you all the laws. Of the, the black, 12 the tribes. Black, black man's dictionary. Black laws black di dictionary. dictionary. But they don't know 
No, they don't even know their great grandma's name. Yeah, they don't even know their great grandmother's name. So their grandmother's this grandmother. Is Let me tell you, like I was talking to the Veronica Lisa, she's watching. I told her on the phone. I was talking to her and her friend. The best part about this research, the best part about this whole journey for me, mm-hmm. was learning more about my family history. Mm-hmm. I was able to say, damn. My family was born here. Damn, my family owned this much land. Damn, my family had this. Damn, my great grandma's name. My great grandma's name was Sevilla Rogers. Damn, her mama's name was Nancy Rogers. Damn, they was with Will Rogers. Them family, like, it takes you through this whole journey of learning more about yourself and the people that you came from, your ancestries, your ancestors. Not just saying, oh my ancestors. Y'all be praying to your ancestors, but y'all don't know your ancestors' names. Mm-hmm. Talk to the elders in your family. It does reconnect you with the elders in your family because you can sit and say, "Hey, grandma, if your grandma's still living, talk to her." My grandma just happened to tell me a lot of stuff when we was younger, and I just remembered all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? But they they're not here no more. So it's like if you can get on ancestry and say, "Okay, I remember my mama saying my great great grandma's name was Sheila, and this is and that da da da." And you start saying, "Okay, dang, Sheila got married to my great great grandpa." Then when they was 23 years old, they got married. And dang, she had eight kids. And dang, they lived on a farm in Virginia. You know what I'm saying? It, it does give you that sense of, like, completeness when you start realizing, like, dang, my family was businessmen and women. Then they owned this. They owned houses. Then they got married around this time. Oh, my gosh, she got a divorce. She did this. It kind of gives you that history of your family. And it makes you feel a little bit closer to your ancestors. Mm-hmm. Y'all be calling our ancestors and calling our ancestors that may not even be right all the way right. So you better start calling on the right names. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you better start getting to know those names. And when we did our journey, we did find out our family owned about 1,000 acres of land in Oklahoma. Whether they sold it or not, they still owned 1,000 acres. And, and that was their little hustle of getting the acres from the Indian allotments and selling it to make some money. Because you got to realize when they came back from the Trail of Tears and got the land allotments, they came back with nothing. So they probably had no choice but to sell the land. You know what I'm saying? To make some money. Mm-hmm. And that's what they had to do to survive is what they did to survive. But the fact that they had a thousand acres in possession, over a thousand acres, it, it, it makes you feel like, well, if they did it then, I can do it now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So to get enrolled, I'm going to post all the links to different tribes. But like I said, you do need to know the first tribe. It's very easy. You have to know the tribe that you're trying to enroll with. Go to their website, get their tribal registration packet off their page. That pack is going to say, hey, what's your name? Mm-hmm. Hey, what's your mama or your daddy? Whoever you're trying to connect through, your mama or your daddy's name. You don't got to put your, your – if you're only going through your dad's side, put only your dad's information. If you're only going – you ain't got to put your mama and your daddy. But Do you want to show them this? Yeah, I'll show you this. So my for my audience as well. So this is the citizenship application. So you get down a little bit here. Let me zoom out maybe just a little bit. And so they're going to ask your father's name, your mother's name. You know, if, if you know that your mother of your mother of your mother is where you're going through the nation. Yes. So we, we did mother. I'm going to put up just a little bit so they can see it. So for us, we went through our mothers. And, and it's good because Cherokees are matrilineal. So we put our mother's name, our maternal grandmother. Here, when we got to our maternal grandmother, we put, had to put her roll number. Yes. Her Indian roll number. Our grandmother didn't have one. Our mother and, didn't and, have and one. And we didn't use her grandfather's name because he wasn't going through him. My, my mom's grandpa wasn't... Um, a native. Wait, wait, wait. Her grandfather was because remember, Dave. That's David. No, that's es- 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 Ezra. Oh, Ezra. Yeah, Ezra. Ezra wasn't. wasn't. He wasn't. Okay, so yes. So then her mother was. So, oh, this is our maternal. Yes. yes. So the maternal is your mother's mom. So your. So, so, so your that's means, that means my grandmother, yes. and then my great grandmother and great grandfather. So then for us, we had to go on the back. We we had to say add more on the back. Yes, because this was if we would have finished here, we would have still been doing Creek. So this is. Your name over here, your mom's name, your grandma's name, your great grandma's name. We had to go on the back because we wanted to go through Cherokee, so we had to go put our we had to go great, further, further great back. grandmothers. Yes. Instead of just using our great grandmother information, we had to use our great great grandmother's name. Now, if you want to just stop at a certain now, if we were doing Creek, we would have just stopped here and just went through the Creek, Muscogee tribe. But we wanted to go through Cherokee, so we had to continue listing Sevilla's information and because Sevilla was Cherokee. <laughs> Get out. Let me get off all this computer if I pull up some damn porn. <laughs> oh, God. What was that, her interview? 
you know. So that's very important. So they are going to ask roll number. If you do not have anybody's number on the roll, DOS roll, they're going to send your application back. No good. They can't do anything to help you. You have to have a roll number. So this is just some other stuff. Once you fill that part out, again. And, 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 this is, and, and this is basically the same information. This was just for the Indian the Bureau of Indian Affairs. It's the same. So thing. yeah, it's basically you need this. You need to keep this so you can keep tracing through, tracing through. If you do this and you don't do this part, they're gonna send your application back. So this is just that's for the Cherokee Nation. This is for the Indian Bureau, the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Yeah, it's the same information that goes on this on this sheet. Yes. And then this is just a uh, saying you understand. And then here is you just putting in basic information for yourself. Email address. This, how, do, how can they contact The email you? address you use here, the phone number, and your mail address, that's what's going to go on your Indian card. Yes. And you need to make sure it's up to date. If you move, you need to make put it in writing, send it in writing. Yeah. We'll get into benefits later. Give me a second. Now, now, this is what I have to do. If you have children, you have to do this. If you are a mother of the children, do this. If you are a father of the children, do this. But you have to do this affidavit. You have to get it uh, uh, notarized and everything. That I had to print off each child, Ozion and Ozaria. I had to do two of them. I'd have the first middle name. They said, they said, I, said I missed the middle name. And I went up there. It was right on there. Yeah, they are they so incompetent that. Yeah, in their are. office. And then they said, you have to print the child. So everything needs to match. This needs to match directly the birth certificate. You don't have to put the father's name on there. I mean, he doesn't have to sign, but his name doesn't have to be on there. If his name is on the birth certificate, it needs to be on this paper as well. So the, the father's name needs to be on the paper as well. Because uh, even if he's, if he's on the birth certificate, it has to match the birth certificate. Also, is, is that it? And that's basically it. It's only, y'all, it's only like four sheets of paper. Right. It's only four sheets of paper. The research is what is the most. Is the, the research is, the, is more strenuous than anything. It's just knowing, once you know the people's names and have a roll number, your job is to connect yourself to oh Sharon Sanders Brooks is the one she was trying to tag in. I thought she was trying to have them put the name on the roll. I was like, they don't know. They don't know. Well, Brooks does sound like some. Um, so this is uh, another thing I wanted to point out. Oh yeah, I talk fast. I talk slower. You only need the names mm -hmm. of the person that you're trying to connect to. If you think, if you say, my grandma said we was Indian. Well, which Indian did your grandma say you was? If your grandma said you were Choctaw, then it's up to you to go look at the Choctaw records. Contact Choctaw, say, hey Choctaw, uh, I'm trying to get, now mind you, these tribes do have genealogy services, but they will help you as well. But you guys have to go on the websites, you know, it's great and dandy, we're all helping you guys look up everything or tell you how to do it, but it's not that hard to just go on the website and say, my grandma said we was Creek. Then go type in Creek Indian, and then Creek Nation website is gonna come up and then it's gonna say register for enrollment. Then you're gonna see the documents they need. Then you're gonna print that off. And then you're gonna send it in. And then they're gonna send you back what they need. They're not gonna, even if they reject you, you can still come back and get whatever you need. They're not gonna ultimately reject you. They give you about a year to provide the information that you need. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Then before they close out the application. If you have a, if, if they say, hey, we need this, this, and that, da da da, at least you know you have a list of all things you need. Then if you don't get that sent back in a year, then they're gonna say, okay, well, we're gonna close out the application. Then you just start all over. Start all, it doesn't mean that you're not Indian. It just means that you need to provide more information because a lot of people are doing fraud and a lot of people are saying, hey, I'm related to this, this, and that, and then they have no proof and they just send in their birth certificates that has no, just because it's a common name, but it's not connected. So the roll number is produced by the tribe. The roll number is produced by the dolls roll. At the registration at the time. So you may have been 2000 and your baby may have been 2001 and the other kid may have been 2002. Like for instance, yeah. if you were related to me and I have a registration number right now, so everybody in my family right now can either use me or my sister's registration because, but they still have to prove how they're related to us through that person that we use to, you know what I'm saying? So right now, let's say my cousin in Kansas City want to get enrolled. Me and my cousin have the same grandpa. We have the same grandma and grandpa. She needs to show she's her Jessica. Jessica's mom is Dale, but Dale's mom is uh, Dale's mom is Vera. My mom is Priscilla, and my mom's mom is Vera as well. So if Jessica can prove that she's related to me by saying, "Hey, our moms have the same mom," 
Same you know grandma. We got the we, we got the same grandma. We have the same grandma that we're tracing. So she can through, use yeah. my role number and prove that she's related to me by saying, "Hey, because we have the same grandma." And I and Oprah use our grandma to get registered. You know what I'm saying? Because I use my grandma's side, then she needs to prove that she's related to my grandma as well. But she can prove that she's related to me first, to, in, to, instead of going to go look for all these archives. That's why you guys need to talk to people in your family. Some of your family is already in registered and enrolled, and they're just not telling y'all. So there's Baker's Rolls, Dawes Rolls, the Guion Rolls, the Indian Senses. Let me get that. Yeah, let me show my people here. I'm going back. Where you see that? So the Baker's Roll. So some people was, was on the Dawes Roll, but they're not on the Baker's Roll. So, I mean, no, 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 excuse me. Some people are on the Baker's Roll, but they couldn't get on the Dawes Roll. So a lot of times they say, are you on any other rolls? And they would say, yeah, I'm on the Baker's Roll. The Guillen Miller, the Indian Census Rolls, the Kern, these are all different military people that's like, I'll take care of the Indian problem. Dawes was a person that said, I'll take care of the Indian problem, just like they Keep say. This, off, Lala. Um, the Roblin Roll and the Rawless Rolls. So these are all the different, like a roll call, right. registration roll. So that's what I'm trying to say. Just because you might not find your family's name on, and what website you got that up? Archives.gov is going to list different roles. Okay, wait, but this is the thing. Hold on. So National Archives Identifier, see, that's what I'm saying. You got to go into I, I, National, there's so many files. So this file is file 300320. And that's going to give you to the final roles of the freedmen of the five civilized tribe. They got enrollment jackets, land allotments, and all this stuff. So if I want to go just Cherokee, all right, uh, let's see. I want, I want, no, I'm going to do Muskogee. I want to do Creek. All right, they got Creeks by Blood. Those a lot of times were a lot of your um, white settlers that were coming in from Europe. Yes. They had to say that they were by blood because they needed to keep their scam going. Yeah. And then they put us that we were freedmen. Yeah. I'm trying to find Newborn Creek. And so the way they got it, so it's a lot of reference. It's a lot of reference material. It's a lot of things you got to, if you find this, look. Look how, I mean, look at this. Like who... So look, so what if I want to- great grandma's on here. She should be somewhere. There she, she is. is, right She's there. She's right there, Claire, Claire First May. page. This is, a, this is a newborn- It's alphabetical newborn, order. Newborn, and there's our great grandma, Claire May So Brown. I'm gonna do that for y'all one more time. She was 476. Yeah, so look, I'm gonna do this one more time. You gotta know, okay, what page? So if you know if it's alphabetical order, we know our last name is Brown, you might be able, you might just have to go through it. You'd be like, okay, here we go. Boom, I clicked on it. Newborn, the newborns were getting land allotment. So then I go to Clara, number 476. Bam, you got that. You think you done? No. Now I got to go back and research Clara 476. But yeah, but we have to go research Clara 476 to make sure that it is the correct Clara May uh, 476 roll number. We just happen to know that because we actually have a birth affidavit. Uh, I should have brought my papers up. It's in my house. That's what I'm saying. Like, what if you're looking for an answer and you just don't know? So this is why yeah. I go back to this. And her birth certificate said 476. Okay, so look at this. So this is how you make sure, right? So you can you can put it back on this. So let me see. Her name is Clara. This is who we trace. Oh, this is not really who we trace. We're Cherokee, but we know she. Let's say you don't know. No, let's put say, 476 in. I'm just going to search it. Let's see. Let's say you don't know. Now, look, a lot of people are going to run into this. You see all these Clara. Now you're like, Clara May Brown, Clara Brown. All right, she's Creek Freeman, but okay, whatever. So how would you know? So I would go to the search card number 233, and I see, all right, she was three years old at the time they did her paperwork. For some people, that's enough. For mm -hmm. some people, they would have been like, okay, got the number, boom. I'm like, nah, well, her mama name is. That's just the type of person I am. So I had to go, and I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the paperwork where I found all her stuff. So just give me a minute. So I went back and found her paperwork. Once I found her her Indian card, which we didn't bring no paperwork up here, but once I found her Indian card, it was elongated. I opened it up. It told us everything about yeah. her father. But then when it got to the mother, it said her mother was Cherokee, and yes. I was like, oh, I cannot just ignore this woman, you know. So that's why we went the Cherokee route. We wanted to go further as far as back as Sevilla. Mind you, Cherokee is also the largest nation of the five civilized tribes. Actually, they probably be the largest tribe, period. I think they are the largest uh, Indian tribe. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, with about 380,000 members. Uh, and I think Creek only has like 170,000. Imagine if you're going through all the Cherokee, you're going through Cherokee Freedmen, and you got to do all this. You got to go all this intermarry. You got to do all this stuff, you know? Like, I'm going to Cherokee Freedmen, okay? So I'm going to go. All right, got it. That ain't the page. Show them the interview. Where's the interview? That's what I'm trying to look up. I have all this stuff. So like, we have also 
and we was able to like so we had to verify to ourselves first before mm-hmm. we sent it in we didn't just send in shit because we was like oh yeah we just send it in we had to go and say no let's go make sure all right i got albums so i got my stuff in albums so i'm gonna try to i don't think so um i don't think we related to no Ad- addy shattuck brown our family is more brown williams glass Holloway. Um, okay here i'm gonna show this then uh, okay so this was our this was her. This was her birth certificate. That we be able careful. To find. We in my photo. So this is how we know that. We in my photos. So when we when we found her roll number, then we had, when the, and we found this. So this is how we knew that this was her because there goes that four seven six. There we know Clara her father name is da- we, David. Yeah, you know, David Brown, and then we know Sevilla Brown was. You know what I'm saying? And so look at this. Look at look how this is white, and look how this is black. They folded that, or they her, folded her car. Look how it has not seen. This is the original color, but look at that. That lets me know that the way they filed it wasn't proper. The sun was exposed to light, and that could bleach some stuff out. Or maybe they just folded it over the years. Yeah. So, so, so then it says, mother's role, she's Cherokee, born June, they didn't know people's birthdays, 1902. So this is how we were able to know that this this Clara May with the 476 roll number was accurate because we knew our great grandpa's name, we knew our great grandma's name. Don't mind my nails, I need to feel. And we knew our great grandma's name, and, and so it's a great. Cherokee. Mind you, this is a Creek nation. David was Creek, Sevilla was Cherokee. That, so once I saw that, I was ready to go Muscogee. I was okay, but when I saw that, I said, I can't ignore a mother. So what happened then? Um, let me go back. You can go back to you. So I don't want them to see everything that I'm pulling up in between. So, this is how we was able to verify. So once we got that, we said, okay, cool. Now we know Sevilla's Cherokee. Now let's look for Sevilla's roll number. Yeah. So once we did that, so for me, um, okay, what else I was trying to pull up? Who's that? that that's um, Sam, Sam Duckett, Rosetta oh. Cook Duckett. This helped. Um, Let me see. This helped a lot. And I'm going to see if I can. Imagine this stuff is old, so it's very hard. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to go back to my, for my audience. All right, so this is not an interview, but this is what we were saying before. This is the Department of the Interior. That's why Deb Halen right now is the Secretary of the Department of Interior, and that's why the freedmen are, are having their hearings right now. This is all department, This is all about surveying the land, commission to the five civil tribes. So as a citizen of Cherokee Nation, oh, this is her daughter, so this is an example, uh, blah, 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 David Brown, Sevilla Brown. And so here they had to do... Um, Sevilla Brown, when they say adoption of the Cherokee Nation, that's saying the adoption into the roles. And then they also had her mother, a midwife, this is for one of her siblings, a midwife, Rose, I say, so who's Rose Rogers? Come to find out Rose Rogers is Sevilla's mother. So she, her, she was the Sevilla Rogers before she was Sevilla Brown, before she married David Brown. So they made Indians at the time sign, like you gotta do an affidavit. Mm-hmm. They had to do affidavits. As you can see. And their other scam was to say, oh, they're adopted, they're adopted into the tribes. Well, that was saying that, um, it's kind of like how we say enrolled. We're so, enrolled. No, our family, what I'm saying is they were saying that. Our family saying, so we wasn't Cherokee, we was adopted. It's people like, so, that man. People are so scary and they're so ready to discredit. Maybe, maybe, maybe they had adoption agencies back then. <laughs> no, they were just kidnapping. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff that I have. Mil- you can find a lot of military records on this. Everyone's birth certificates. Long form birth certificate. Not short form, you need long form birth, you need your mama's long form birth certificate. If you're going to your daddy, then you need your daddy's long form birth certificate. If you're going through your mama's mama, you need, your, you need her, your grandma's long form, or if you're going through your grandpa, you need your grandpa's death certificate and long forms over the internet. If you, if you have time, then go to, if you're in Kansas City, go to Jefferson City. If you're in Texas, you have to go to Austin. If you, well, you have to go to your capital to get your long form birth certificate. If you know what city, state that your or city that your parents are born in, or state rather, while you're there, if you're if they want if they're Kansas City and they also died in long form birth certificate, mm, mm, you need everything has to be original copies. So long form is the original copy of birth certificates. If someone is deceased and you're trying to use that person's lineage, say I'm trying to get to my great great grandma, but my grandpa died, you still need his long form birth certificate because it's going to have his parents' name on there. His birth certificate is going to have his parents' names on there. And those parents' names, if that, if that final name is connected to you to Choctaw, then you need to prove that this is their parents and that parent is Choctaw. You know what I'm saying? Long form birth certificates. Once you know the tribe, go to their website, print the enrollment packet off their website. 
fill out the enrollment packets from the website. Send it in. When you mail it back, because no one's going to let you fax it in, you have to mail it in. Mail in certified where you can at least, don't put where somebody can sign for it because there are most PO boxes no one can sign for. It. They're going to send it back to you. But what you want to do is send it in where you can track it. Say, hey, um, I have a tracking number. And it landed, it arrived to you guys on the 3rd of August. Okay, so we just, so let's go back and let's make sure we get the one, two easy steps. The first thing is you have to know which ancestor you're tracing through. All that 12 tribes of Judah, not going to cut it. Comedic ancestors is not what we talking about. Okay, y'all trying to go back 2,000 years of history and you don't even know who your ancestor was 200 years ago. Yeah. That's irresponsible and we really need to cut it out as a nation. Okay, we was on that Pan African train too, but it's time to get into some Pan Americana. Okay? Yeah, where you actually live at. So some of y'all's grandparents, some of y'all's in the same lane your grandparents was born. Yeah, and ain't left the county line. Some of y'all sitting in Kansas City on the <laughs> what's the name of that Kansas tribe? Kansas, y'all probably Kansas Nation. Yeah. So the thing is. Well, I was going to play a video and, and um, I was always going to share a video or record. But I'll probably do it later once you finish yours. But in Lynetta, Kansas, there's a mountain and I'll show it. And I've showed it so many times on my broadcast. There is a mountain of information. When we say a mountain of information, we literally mean subterranean. Got to drive under the mountain in Lynetta, y'all. Yeah. American Indian Records. That's, they said, where is everybody? If y'all run around because y'all see white people hanging around the Cherokee, sometimes they just want to do business with the Cherokee. Sometimes they just like going to the powwow. They don't have no culture. So you're all welcome to the powwow. Yeah. This is a good time for us to figure out what happened. Sometimes we could just listen to your last name. Some of the time we could just look at you and tell. So you come to the powwow. Come to the powwows. You get what I'm saying? Come to the powwow. And then next you can drive underground. Um, to view Indian archives, such as bank records, schools that they went to, what the houses looked like, where the addresses was. That, see, that's when you want to get, when you want to be, no, if you're going to be nosy all about somebody's business, be up in your family business. Some of y'all are like FBI sleuths. Some yeah. of y'all know how to hack. It'd be funny how <laughs> black social media, black. Can dox. Can figure out everything about anybody who Tristan Thompson was sleeping with and Gina Khloe Kardashian with, but y'all don't even know y'all great grandma's name. <laughs> so we need to get with the shit. True that. True that. We need to start. Of, we we investigate the shit out of social media or celebrity gossip, but we don't investigate the shit going on in our family. So start talking to the elders in your family. I know y'all don't like y'all Aunt Mabel and them, but you need to talk to Aunt Mabel at next Thanksgiving and say, Mabel, what what where did our family live? And because Mabel know everybody's business. <laughs> Mabel's always know everybody's business. She know everything. She know your great grandma's name. She know who he's married to. Who he's divorced. That, that one family member that just know everything. Everybody's business. <laughs> Talk to her. She gonna because we. I, I tell you, I did not even know my great grandma owned a plantation. She said, "Yeah, that's how she met your great grandpa." And I said, "So were they slaves?" She's like, "No, he just worked on the land." Plantation was he just worked on Agriculture. the land. Agriculture. We need food. Y'all y'all gonna want that plantation with that food shortage. Y'all think white people <laughs> just came here and then they, they they just say, Oh, get to work and start picking cotton. We already had cotton. And didn't fields. even know what a sweet potato was. Yeah, we already had we already had we was already farming on the land. So when y'all see all these pictures of black people that y'all call black and, and they, they look, look like, all poles. Look like farmers. That ain't them niggas ain't poles, them niggas got money. They was farmers. What do you think farmers dress they, like? They fed the world. Yeah, they what y'all think farmers walk around dressed like? I think them are them some slaves. Everybody well, was, was eating off America. Them people was in the pictures looking like, them niggas is calling us slaves. <laughs> I know. Now. We ain't no damn slaves. <laughs> we just, we ain't about to, we, in our Sunday's best, farming our land. We work hard, we so play we hard. So we every time I see people, in, in melanated people in pictures, with black and white pictures, and they got things in their hand, and they, come on, they're looking at them slaves. Them, they y'all spitting in their face every time I say that. Them people was rich and they owned their land. They owned oil. They owned cornfields, cotton fields, sweet potato farms. And y'all sitting calling them slaves because white people told y'all that they they was enslaving everybody. Like y'all really believe that it took four hundred million people on, on some boats. The white people, first of all, them niggas can't even get niggas keep niggas in the house during COVID. <laughs> but they show us forcing us on boats and making us you you on this boat, blackie. <laughs> Come on now, your heavy nigga bones. Get, get your heavy nigga bones on my shit. <laughs> and, and you think that we, we was okay with that? And and they and they was feeding us and we was healthy and strong. We showed we landed healthy and strong. <laughs> then you landed healthy and strong in America to farm the land. 
<laughs> no, y'all really think that? I mean, that's about uh, muscle bound uh, niggas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, muscle bound. And y'all but, fighting with speed. Because, like, so, muscle bound, but he was, he was feeding the mush on a boat, but he sure landed muscle bound. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so funny because it's, it's absurd. And y'all believe it. And y'all be like, it's oh, absurd. yeah, the slave trade show did happen. And, and if, if, if it didn't happen, first of all, Columbus didn't even set foot on Americans on, on United States. He was he never even made it here. He, yeah, he was all in the Caribbean. Yeah, all the fucking Car- Caribbean bitches. <laughs> <laughs> and let's be honest, so people say they remember ships. A lot of times they were sending people from the Caribbean to the mainland and people from the mainland to the Caribbean. And then a lot of times the people in the Caribbean are speaking English because a lot of the Black Amours or the French Black Amours, the English Black Amours were coming down to the Caribbean. They were actually, this is the Moorish Empire. What a lot of people don't like to realize is that they had an extensive and an expansive empire. The Moors were doing business with everybody. But all this, I own you because you have this color, you have sunlight in your skin, you got melanin, so I own you, it's absurd. Mm -hmm, It's absurd. mm -hmm. And actually, if you want to think about it, in the 13 original colonies, slavery was prohibited. In all the English-speaking colonies, now Spanish Florida, that's a different thing, but English, from all the way from uh, New England, New York, all the way down to Georgia, those were free states. The Magna Carta of 1215, the Church of England, said there should be no, there was no slavery in Great Britain. There was no slavery in England. And that extended to the territory, her territories as well. So if any of y'all are from an area where there was the 13 original colonies, meaning Virginia, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, the Carolinas, Virginia, all those, Virginia Company, look at the Royal Charter. It even says that these people shall be free, whether they are working with a, a governor or a deputy, all persons should be free in the natives. They were really saying this is the native's land and we must respect it. That's why in 1776, they broke away from the British monarchy because they were, they were imposing taxes saying, see, this is the part they leave out, saying, well, King George issued a proclamation, the, the namesake for the state of Georgia, he issued a royal proclamation in 1763. And he said, because you can, his, his detachments and his subjects and his governors could not get along with the Indian, anything west of Georgia, which was what we today call Mississippi, Alabama and Georgia, that was all Georgia for King George's territory. He said anything west of that, that's Indian hunting ground. So th- there was no Aldi's, there was no Whole Foods for anybody to go shopping. If you wanted to go shopping, you had to go out into the woods, you had to go out to the forest, you had to go hunt. And they used to make a whole tribe, to go hunt, they had to do tribal ceremony, they had to bless the animal, you know, it wasn't about killing the animal, it was about the animal, it was a sacred hunt. Then they would take the animal back then they would bring the animal back. So it wasn't always just killing on the hunting ground. So anyway, anything west of that. King George in the same proclamation of 1763 told his subjects, from now on, I will buy from the Indians and then you will buy from the king. Well, when you, you everybody knows the retail market. When you buy and you buy, you got to put something on top. You got to put a little bit of tax on top. Your points. You, 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 you got to put your points on top. <laughs> So, anyways, um, so, <laughs> so what we're saying is the king was saying, I'll buy from the Indians, and then you buy from the king. Well, they didn't want to pay taxes, and we all know the dumping of the tea, the Boston Tea Party, that was all over taxes. Who was the first person killed in the American Revolutionary War? It was Crispus Attucks. He was Native American. Look it up. He was working the ports in Boston, Massachusetts. He was the first, they said it was a shot her around the world, because everybody in the world was like, so they killing the Indians? You just gonna kill an Indian in, in America? We need America. How is America going to respond? So some of y'all got ancestors that were fighting for the British to keep the British monarchy. That's why you speak English. That's why a lot of y'all, and this is the, this is the court of King James. This is uh, King George, and this is King Charles for Charleston, Charlotte. All this is the, the Blackamoors, okay? So a lot of y'all speaking English. So everybody's like, okay, so they kill an Indian and how the Indians gonna respond? Like I said, a lot of y'all ancestors fought in the American Revolutionary War. They fought in the French Indian Wars. Some of y'all ancestors that are New Orleans fought in the Battle of New Orleans. These were all black military factions. The Secretary of State, Alderman, these were all black people. So as long as we try to uphold call- for all the, the people that are trying to fight for critical race theory, I think we do need to dump critical race theory and talk about what really happened. We need to dial it back. Slavery did not start in America until July 4th, 1770. The king and owned slaves. When everybody owed their allegiance and their wealth and everything to the king, the king gave out, the way we do land allotments, the way they gave out land, that's how the kings used to do. 
So the United States is trying to act like a monarchy, but it's a, a centralized government saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant. <laughs> well done. It's like a blessing. That's why, you know, the book of Lot, they're talking about land plots, land allotment. They're literally issuing out to different families. Well done, you served in the war. If you had military excellence, well done, you get an acre. Well, you get a mansion. You, that's how they, they used to do. So how could you own slaves when the king was the one divvying out all the wealth? Okay, you got the best uh, um, plantain farm. You got the best potato farm. And everybody used to give and, and, and put into the, the empire. And that's how everybody ate. The video is glitching? So that's why y'all should have came to the YouTube. The YouTube is up, still up and running, but we'll still post the YouTube thing too. Yeah, I the want YouTube to make link. sure. So Are there I, any questions? Yeah, make sure and, and, and hit the chat um, in my chat. I'll see you to those. Um, to those people want to know. So just again, if you got an ancestor, if you know their name around 18, you may not know the tribe. Everybody not might know the tribe. Our family, only reason we are just now getting back involved, I want to be very clear about this. Our grandmother and our grandfather met on the reservation and they left the reservation. Her brothers were in college at the time. They didn't know where their sisters went off to. So the brothers who were in high school, college at the time, come back home, their sisters is gone off, right? But they stayed with the Muscogee. They were already on Muscogee land. They went to college. Most likely they went to college for free. Mm -hmm. Uncle Martin, they, you know, they, they were very well educated. This side of family, that's the PhD I think, I think side went, of I think, family. I think Uncle Martin went to, um, where, where, where did Barry Sanders go? Oklahoma State. That's where Uncle Mars went. Okay, so Barry Sanders also, that's all Indian land. So we'll get into, I uh, really want to get into Tulsa, but we'll, we'll touch on Tulsa briefly because... Our, our, we're Tulsa County, our, a lot of our roots. So anyways, um, our grandmother left to go be with our grandfather, but her brothers have always stayed with the Muscogee. So us, I mean, it's a blessing in disguise because now they're Muscogee, which is great, but we went a step further because we got, we playing so much catch up. You, our, grandpa, our grandpa was Cushada out of Red River, Louisiana. They, Kushana, they are yeah. a federally recognized tribe, but they are not a part of the five civilized tribes. So, uh, Indian, the Indian thing was still going on, and our family, like, so either way it goes, we were Indian regardless. Mm -hmm. um, because our, our, even on our grandpa's side. However, someone asked him, what are the benefits? <laughs> oh, here she goes. The benefit queen. She's been designated the Indian queen of the family. Yeah, I am the benefit queen of the family. She, I'm she be you. searching. Because I ain't doing shit if it ain't no benefit for me. <laughs> I'm not doing nothing for nobody if I don't benefit from it. And I'm just playing. Benefits. Right now, this is the latest, the latest, newest, I think is a great benefit, is the University of California is waiving tuition fees for Native Americans. Which means you can go to UCLA, you can go to University of California, Berkeley, University of California, Riverside. What's anything the other University of California. Anything University of California, which is UCLA. That's the most popular one that everyone knows. Tuition is way. You just got to get in. <laughs> um, right now, because Indian country, Oklahoma was given back to the Native Americans. Oklahoma, with the exception of Oklahoma City, is now Indian country. Which means... It means a lot. <laughs> which means... Based off your tribe, hit that link. Do you think that original tribe member might get mad? Likely, people taking advantage of the benefits. No, the benefits are there for you to take. Yeah, it's you're supposed. Why, who do you? Why do you care so much about what other people are getting mad about? They don't get mad. Then I was like, oh my god, here goes another person coming in for some benefits. They they only get benefits because they're giving benefits. They, their money stops if they don't have no people coming to grab it. They don't. They don't have. They. It's, they, they want us to. And they, mind you, they already know the Indians are at a. It's like a minority group. They already know that the Native Americans are automatically at a disadvantage. They know that people don't hire us. Yes. They know people don't rock with us. They know we're discriminated against. They know genocide has happened. And real one thing, real quick. This is what happened in 2020 with the McGurk case. We got to answer that question too. All right, and we'll be in standby. Thank you, and we'll see your question there. In 2020, the Supreme Court ruled that Tulsa is still Muscogee territory. There was a case in which uh, someone had committed a crime and they were saying, well, well, what's the jurisdiction? So it went all the way to the Supreme Court to say that Tulsa is very much still Muscogee territory. Okay? That makes more sense. <laughs> so in 2020, um, with the McGurk case, um, so we're just going to do this. We're just going to close it up all together. Go ahead. Yeah. So basically, no, 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 close that. 
So what happened was Tulsa in around the early 1900s, it was a lot of our people, the American Indians, Musco I'll just say particularly Muscogians, who had a surplus of land. And they understood that there were some melanated people, black brothers, sisters, whatever you want to call them, that were just displaced and they were at a disadvantage. So they put out an article, um, they put out a, like a help one and, or just some a, a ad welcoming all these other black people or people that look like them to say, hey, we understand the United States is mistreating you, but we have our Indian land allotments. Come be with your people in Muscogee Indian Territory, which later became Tulsa. That's how they were able to build Black Wall Street. Tulsa was known as the oil capital of the 20th century. So when they did their race riot, um, see what happens, there's a pool of oil that's also under Oklahoma City, but it's all been drained. So now we're at this gas shortage. The pipeline from Russia has been cut off. Gas prices in California in some places are $7 a gallon. I think it's getting a little bit better because they had a deal. But essentially, we have oil. We have really good land. In Oklahoma, everybody thought, oh, this is bad land. And they just gave the Indians any old thing. But come to find out, it's very fertile land out there. And a lot of that so-called bad land is because there's, it's, it's shell rock and it's got oil underneath a pool of oil sitting underneath that could be that want they want to drill so that's the real reason they're giving a lot of this land back is so they can go back to us and say hey can we negotiate hey the original land allotment belonged to the indians can we go and make a deal so a lot of your so-called black towns i mean from detroit look into the uh, history before it was you know that detroit got a lot of french indian history uh, Chicago, um, St. Louis, going all the way down the Mississippi, the Royal Mounds in Mississippi, the Etowah Mounds, all these areas. So when you want to rep your state, rep your city, the best thing you could do is go look at the origins. And then now you got the origins. Go a little bit further, maybe go a few hundred years back, and every city is going to tell you the name of the American Indian tribe. So if you know that your grandparents' grandparents lived in Delaware, if you know your grandparents' grandparents lived in Virginia, then why not go do a little bit more research? You know, keep digging. But Tulsa is Black Wall Street, Greenwood, Archer, and Pine. That Greenwood district, that's Muscogee land. Mm -hmm. Still to this day. Mm -hmm. To this day. Still to this to day. To this day. <laughs> to this day. Absolutely it is. So, he had another question. Yeah, he, he said, um, once you get registered, you go find unclaimed land. Yes. What happens is, um, unclaimed, okay, this yeah. is what they're going to say the United States has. And we have a surprise for y'all. Uh, we have an announcement that we're going to make at the end of this. We have an announcement. Naps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, girl, you pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> we're going to pop out some Cherokee babies around here. Yeah, home. who's trying to get married to me for these benefits? I'm just saying. <laughs> I am looking for. That's our announcement, but, but it yeah, goes that, along with you, what you're saying. But what United States? They're going to say that United States has no. There's no such thing as unclaimed land in the United States. That's what they're going to say. Really? Yeah, that's what they say. You didn't see that when we was looking at all that research. They said there's no unclaimed land in the United States. What happens is they have. Okay, for instance, the land that we says the 40 acres is underwater is claimed by the United States. <laughs> okay, this is what happened with that. The land deeds. Woo! The land deeds. So when you get your original Indian land deed allotment, they're going to say something like Township 24, mm -hmm. Range 16, Round se Section Number 9. Yeah. And so we were like, then you better tell us some longitude, latitude lines so that they're not going to do that. No. So we had to go to the county clerk's office. The land records, once we were at the county clerk's, yeah. we had to cross we, we went to about five county clerk's offices in Oklahoma. We went to... Rogers, Rogers, Wagner, Mays, Claire, Claire, Mays, and Tulsa. Tulsa County. Which, mind you, that shit is not close to each other. So everybody watching around talking about, I don't want to do that because that's too far. We literally drove around Oklahoma. We stayed in Tulsa for <laughs> about three three days and drove around and went to these different counties. And mind you, we, we were looking at our family's paperwork that says they have I'm gonna show 938 some. acres here or, or 538, 78 acres here. And then when they break down the townships and the sections and the routes and the, this, 
I'm going to actually show a video where I, was, I actually was able to sneak some video footage out of me and how big these books were. I didn't even show everything. Oh, yeah, you had to actually go to the book. You had to scroll over to, okay, Township 17, North, and then it'd be like a Section 52. Mind you, this is like, this is how addresses was. So we thinking that, okay, our ancestors have 578 acres. You can show but them. of this 578 acres, this is where they located. Let me show you guys. So this is where I had to figure out what does that mean when they say section 20? What does it mean when it says... Is it clean? Oh. Yeah, township, such and such. So I had to write down, I had to go to this book on this piece of paper and see Claire. Okay, I say, may see Seville, I may see David Brown. Had to go and ref, cross-reference. What does that mean? What does it mean? They, then it tells you what book it's in. So it might say book J. Don't ask me where I was. I was sitting in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not doing it. No, I couldn't book do it. J. Then I had to close this book and go to a book J just to see the photocopy of what actually was archived. I had to first get point reference numbers, Sevilla, 120 acres, uh, lot number nine, section this, township this, Range that, but remember these places are not even cities yet. Yeah, they're not. They're not cities yet. They're townships and sections. So and little plots of land. Yes, and, and mind you, so we're like, oh my god, we see that they have this land on the next on this railroad, um, on this railroad, and we're like, oh fuck, it's the railroad that goes from Missouri. What was it? Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Texas railroad. What was it called? That railroad. KMT railroad. The KMT railroad. So then we're like, okay, so we should definitely get some shit because we're there next to a railroad. Then we go, then we go look up the paperwork. Then it says, oh, such and such sold this to this person. So a lot of the land that we were finding that our, our family owned, they were all selling it to like corporations and companies. Because oil companies. Everybody was fighting for land in Oklahoma because of the oil that is in Oklahoma. So mind you, our people are coming back from the Trail of Tears. They just trying to survive. So they said, this land for all this money. They need money because they, they like, yeah, you gave us land, but we ain't got no damn house. We ain't got no farm equipment. We ain't got no farm equipment. We, we can't build we a the, house. Yeah. We can't build a TV on this motherfucker. Yeah. So they had to sell a lot of their land just to get some money, just to get, just to build a fucking house somewhere else on somebody else's land because we sold ours. Now, we did find 40 acres of land underwater, which Tulsa now uses as their water. What's the word? Okay, so this is what I was going to say. Water conservative. <laughs> How, hold on, hold how on. How do you say the word, Lala? Uh, water, conservation? The water conservation. I can't hold say it. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I wanted to explain how that how we came to be. So once I did all the cross-reference, so I did that. That was when we did it ourselves. But some records, they got to go do. So once I have my Indian uh, land allotment number or I have my, my roll number, I can now say such and such is my great-grandmother and I want her Indian land allotment. I want her D. So then they went and just emailed it to me. So I called, a, what you got to do is a, a, what we call a title company. Mm -hmm. A title company will do what they call an abstraction, meaning they will tell you every time it was sold, mm -hmm. every time it was handed over, every time it was this, that, and the other. Yeah. So and most of them charge $550 per county. Um, so you would, but a lot of them just did ours for free because I think they didn't get nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and sometimes it's their job, it's their duty. Sometimes they get their money from others for doing abstraction. But anyway, she said, if I can find something for you, I'll call you back in 15 minutes. She called me back less than 15 minutes. She said, um, I don't know how to tell you this. It might sound weird. You know, when they never know what they're going to find when they get an abstraction. She said, but your land is plotted in the middle of Lake. I know. We're on a, first of all. We're on Tonga land. We're on a rooftop. We're in the we're high up in the sky, so <laughs> see the high? We're we're up oh, so she wants it, to show. it could be the it could be the, the Wi Fi could be acting up because we're up here very high in the sky. So look. So she said, I don't know how to tell you this, but your aunt she said the land that was able to you know, plot is in the middle of Lake Ugula. Ugula. So I said, What you mean our land is in the middle of a lake? Now we all know that a lot of black, uh, uh, black townships, so to speak, like Lake N Lanier or Vanport uh, Lake or uh, all these different lakes where actually there's black townships that used to be there. So it might be, you go under these lakes, you might see a church, you might see some graveyards. If you do some deep diving, you might see what used to be just an old settled township. Mm -hmm old settlement like mm -hmm. i said it might be bodies or maybe an old graveyard buried under there the united states um in the 1950s put this lake as what we would we have this managed by the u.s army corps of engineers 
So Which means they owe some money. Okay. Lake Ugala mm -hmm. actually is the water source that for, for Tulsa. Tulsa. You get what I'm saying? So they were able, everything is Indian land. So it's really not this is that. No, no, no. Really, it's all Indian land. It's just about how much of it is gonna be returned. So basically, he's saying like my, my family may be deceased. Am I able to claim this land? I'm saying to him, if they gave it to a trust, I believe so. I think to look gave first to a trust. Yeah. So that's what we need to we, look into. Well, okay. I, I I have tried that. I have definitely tried that. But the what thing is, is if it, if it wasn't. We have to, we have to figure, we're going to have to talk offline about that because that's, those are Indian money accounts, trust accounts. And they said it's still a lot of people not claiming their money because a lot of people don't know that they're Indians. They, they should have set up a trust. So we might have to go back. We might have to, we might, that's what we have to get a lawyer for. But what happens is because it was sold to a, a security investment company after so long, it's like y'all see the thing is a lot of this is expired because nobody's claiming it. It's just there. So then they just take it over. What are you supposed to do? 20, 30, 40? You thinking you from Africa and you trying to find what Ubuntu tribe you're part of. And that land just sitting there. Yeah. And they just confiscated because, it. And, 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 and like I said, and I say it again, they have to keep that I'm from Africa lie going because if you're not getting your benefits. If you start saying, you know what? I'm actually Native American. It's easier to find this information. People think it's hard because we think Africa, because we have been thinking, oh, we're from Africa, and, and oh my God, where do I start? Because I don't know how to spell half these names, and all of a sudden, so we start looking at Africa, when really we American the whole fucking time, the American Indians, and the information is right a state over from you. Mm -hmm. Your ancestral information is two states down the street. At the cur county clerk's office, because the they, clerk they ain't digitized y'all records and, yet. And it's real easy, because you all you do is your last name back to you and your great-grandparents in the 1800s, and boom, the information right there, and you're like, hold the fuck up. These are realizing we ain't even African, but it's easier to it's easier to or it's harder to go trace back in Africa because then you're like I don't even know where to fucking start, what name, what tribe, what land. Do I need to go over there? And you never find anything because it's it's not even over there anyways. It's up the street around the corner. Correct. So when you start doing that, then they start saying, "Oh shit, my answers are here. They owe us some money. They owe us land. We have land." Then it becomes a problem for America. <laughs> So what's happening? They don't want to give it back. So what's happening right now with the freedmen? A lot of the the black indigenous people, or your, your records are with the freedmen. The freedmen's bureau. Okay, this is what happened with the freedmen's bureau. The freedmen's bureau was a, a bank for all of the freedmen to put their money. That's why our ancestors be like, and our elders be like, I ain't put my money in that bank. That's why they be putting their money in the mattress or would create their own little bank safe. So what happened was the uh, white people were managing the money. For the freedmen, because they said these are newly emancipated people. They don't know how to manage money. They don't know what to do. They only used to just do our accounting and write our records for us. Because not everybody was working on plantations. But anyway, then they said, well, the money is, where's the money? They're lo this bank is losing money. So they gave it to Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass uh, said, I can't do nothing with this. He said, don't give this to me to manage because this is about to go bankrupt. And within a year of them trying to hand it over to Frederick Douglass, the Freedmen's Bureau Bank, was no more. Them white people took all that money. So that's why black people don't trust banks putting their money in the bank because they said they're only going to steal your money. They don't trust the trust. They don't trust the trust. <laughs> so that's why a lot of our people may not have those bank accounts. A lot of them probably did. It's so much that they did to us. But if you're looking at Africa and you're looking for slave ships, you're not going to even see that they confiscated your land. Look what happened at Bruce's Beach. They took their land through eminent domain. That was 1912 through 1920. That's almost 90 something years. Later, they're just now getting their land back. So the United States absolutely sponsored a lot of the confiscation, the seizure. And the drowning of Indian lands. They were literally making these man-made lakes, and they were drowning out a lot of our ancestors' homesteads. Homesteads, absolutely. So when they say, oh, the Europeans got the homestead, well, you got to remember, at this point, a lot of those Blackamoors that were expelled from Europe were actually procreating with Indian women. A lot of those black men that were coming, those black, black more men that were being expelled because the ch uh, ties were changing, the rulership was changing. That's what I'm saying. King jo Charles was black. King George was black. King melanated. James, melanated, deeply melanated. No brick mixing, no dilution of blood. They were pure Israelites, some people would call them. Hebrews. I ain't calling them Hebrews. Well, they were Jacobites. They were absolutely Jacobites. So that's why there's the King James Version. Don't say that. Seminole is okay, just like I'll S sure. and N. Okay.
Yeah. You want to submit the link with with the registration that'll take you directly to the registration. Oh, uh, okay. And then this is Simon. I'll put Simon to denote it. Yeah. So basically, right now, the Secretary Deb Halen, H A A L A N, Deb Halen. She's the she's Pawnee, I believe. Girl, give me the thing. I'm she's she's yeah. Pawnee. And so she basically um, is making the American Indian tribes adhere to the 1866 treaties, which says that they're going to give the freedmen full citizen rights. So Cherokee Nation has already led the way in saying that we don't have any problem with our freedmen, with our, you know, those that were emancipated, what, what, whatever it is. Emancipation still happened, meaning stop kidnapping people. You can't and say you don't. We don't have to show no freedom papers. We don't have to show our Indian cards to prove that we are free, right? So after 1863, um, with the Emancipation Proclamation, all freemen, anybody was just known as it was, means we were free. Okay, Choctaw has never recognized its freedmen. They are very, very racist. Start taking people off the roll. Now that we're in, we could give a, a more of a voice to those the Seminole who doesn't want to let in their melanated freedmen, um, the Chata, and sometimes Chickasha her has issues. Muskogee's a little bit more open. Cherokee Nation don't got no problems. So when people start to see that freedmen, they be like, no, we don't want to let them in. So right now there's a hearing, and so everybody's got to go back to the Peace Treaty of 1866. So if you know which Indian tribe you're part of, like our brother. We have different fathers. He argues for the Atoka Agreement of Chickasha Nation. So Chickasha Nation says that all uh, Chickasha are to receive 360 acres and the freedmen get 40. There's your 40. Where my brother is saying, I ain't no freedmen. We were Chickasha, Chickasha, Chickasha. So everybody, all the tribes have to go back to their peace treaty. The five civilized tribes got to go back to the peace treaty of 1866 and try to figure out what was in those agreements. And they all agreed as part of being the civilized tribes. See, we don't, have, we don't wear a lot of regalia because we assimilated. You might see us wearing jeans and t-shirts and, and dressing like any average American. A lot of people, a lot of your ancestors don't talk about being Indian because that was their means of survival. They were killing Indians. It was bounties on their heads. So they got to the point where they couldn't tell if they were one of the African immigrants that were coming over or if they were um, Indians or if they were coming over from this side or they coming in from Mexico. Remember, this is not a fully developed nation. At the time of the Emancipation Proclamation, there were only 34 states. So if you think about it, a lot of y'all ancestors just never said they were Indian because they didn't know if that meant the government was going to come and find them, kind of like some Nazis. There's still some Nazis out there still looking for runaway Jews, okay? There's still some Nazis that, that can't let that stuff go. So a lot of y'all great-grandparents didn't say nothing in the family because they were still hunting Indians. And they did a lot, and, and, and like how y'all see how my sister put out her whole Indian card, and people still wanted to say she was African. You see how we, if, if unless we show you our Indian card, y'all don't believe that we Cherokee. That's a fucking problem. Yeah. Did you just make me go live? Oh, no. Oh, okay. So what we're saying or, is, a lot of people like when we're talking to Barry Sanders' um, mother. She said, "I used to laugh at your your grandmother growing up." She said, "Oh, there go the little Indian girls." It goes the little Indian girls, and she will be what you call African American black as well. But she knew something about those girls were different. They looked the little Indian girls going to school. So think about it. Think about it. It was people used to be mocked. They used to be teased for wearing their their Indian garb to school. So eventually, over time, they just gave up all that and they just joined in with the hip hop. And look at where we are now. City girls up. City c city girls. Uh, um, <laughs> pussy popping. And, 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 and prostitution lyrics. Somebody say, how long is the process? And um, it took. It should be about a year. Killing, killing each other. About a year. It took us a little bit long because we well, had. I'm not gonna say it took a year. If you don't have, if you have all your paperwork, um, and you don't all your people's names, you got their roll numbers. If you want to wait till you get all your documents together, they send in one big package. Then it's gonna take a couple of months. Now, Lala was the test. Tester, I was going to say, she gets real offended real fast. Lala was a tester for the family, so she kind of went and they said, hey, we need this, we need that, we need this. And she was the first person to do everything. You know, once Lala got everything registered and was approved, then everybody said, whatever she uses, what everybody in the family is going to use. And now they process might take two months, 
But we, I Not kept seven. I kept asking for extensions. I kept saying, hey, I got to go find this, and I don't want to miss my deadline. I said, can I please get an extension? They gave me a three-month. The next time I sent something, they gave me a six-month extension. I was like, okay, cool. But the thing was, it's like she said, yes, you got to get the materials. Yeah. But it, for us, moving. Um, and then think about this, that family member that's the information hoarder that doesn't want to give it. That's what made my process longer. Family members not wanting to give documents and I had to go pay for vital records. I did not want to pay. If somebody had a birth certificate that I needed and it, they already had the long form and it was just right there, you know, think about it. Not everybody has it to go put $35 here or expedite or extra fees, $50 here. So get this information, get the long form, compile as much as you can and then send in your package. Yeah, send it in. Get as much information as you can, send that in. Why? I have a charger right here if you need one. If you have a laptop. So get out the information as you can. Send it in. And then, once you think you have, okay, I have everything I need. Then allow them to say, hey, we need, we're missing this long form from this person. Or, we, or you misspelled this. Then let them come back and say, we need this, this and that. That way you can leave. But try to get as many birth certificates that you can get in. Long form death certificates. Long form birth certificates that's linking you to the person that you need to be linked to that says, my grandpa's shock tile, then prove that, you, that you're your grandpa's grandson. Or prove that you're your grandpa's granddaughter. And it's kind of hard. Or grandma, it's, like it, or it's like, I got to prove this is my mama. Yeah, yes. you got to prove. You need to prove whoever you're trying to say is this person, is this tribal member. Prove that you relate to them. Send in all as much as you can and then let them come back and say, oh, yeah, by the way, we need, I don't know. I, I, I had to go get my little sister's death certificate. We need Shauna's long form death certificate. And mind you, it is hard I'm trying to go back and, you know, you don't want to see your, your your loved ones' death certificates and stuff like that, but you got to go get it. You know what I'm saying? It is an emotional tone. I'm going it's to tell very emotional. My, spiritually, I'm going to say before you do this, do some healing. You know, do whatever your, your Sunday ritual or your self-love ritual. Talk to your ancestors. Ask that they bless your journey. Mm -hmm. For me, I know it was doing stuff like that. When you call those offices and you don't want to get upset because you don't want to, you know, these people are trying to do their job. You got to do a lot of emotional healing before you get into this because it's it's mm -hmm. sad to pull up a death record in mm -hmm. order to see that your family's land was taken from them or that was coerced into selling land or that they probably didn't or want to think sell. Think about Clara; her mother died before she was even ten years old. Yeah, you, you know, start seeing well, the, yeah. you start to see stuff like oh, she you didn't even get a full life with your mother, and you know, so it's a lot of other things. Then you sometimes when you get the name, it's just like a breath of fresh air, and it's like now I gotta I can't just say my ancestors were I gotta say their names George and Rose and Nancy, Clara and Vera and Priscilla. I gotta say all these names. And I'm like, I'm taking them with me into the future. So I would recommend before you do this, knowing that, all right, let's put some reverence on our ancestors' names. Let's put some respect on our ancestors' names. Don't be arguing with your family over records. Say, okay, you don't wanna give me grandma's record, that's okay. That is my actual grandma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, get your own get your own birth certificate. Also, like I said, it is giving you more of a status in America as opposed to saying, oh, black lives matter, we just black and they just treating black people wrong. But how they treat the Native Americans? If, if white people are all claiming Cherokee or white people are claiming Choctaw, well, how they treat the white Choctaw? Yeah. And they over here giving the white Choctaws this, this, and that. Imagine when you apply for a job or some money and then you don't put that you black on there. Instead, hey, Uncle Elijah. And instead you put Native American. And then you get that loan because you be like, Oh, Elijah, never... have you turned in your packet? No, Elijah needs help. He, I told him I would help him, but he lives in Phoenix. I got we got we need to go to Phoenix and help Uncle Elijah with his packet. Elijah got nine kids now. Ooh! I told him I gotta charge you for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of stimulus. It's a lot of cheering. <laughs> but imagine applying for a job and you don't put black because you and you have the proof that says I am Native American. And you walk in an interview and they and they say they hire you because you're Native American. They know they need the funding. They gonna get certain tax breaks because they hire you as Native American. But imagine you even getting the interview just because you didn't put the Jews black and you put the Jews Native American. Because they, they 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 a lot of them are Native Native American. So you mean to tell me if you could check a box and then maybe get a million dollars, you would still put you as black? black. <laughs> Let's see how fast you quit claiming black when <laughs> when they start saying we have now reparations to people who can prove that they are Native American. They fell in the of tears. I bet you could call yourself black then. They're going to say, we can't give it to black because black is not a race. Black that proves nothing. You know what I mean? White people identifying as black, Rachel Dozel. The, all the Africans that are coming over, they had no, black. no ancestry You can't here. give reparations to people when they're saying that they're black because a lot of Nigerians, 
the Ghana, all they come over saying I'm black. Haitians coming over. Haitians, I'm black. People but, come from South America. But, 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 I'm black. So, so, so you're telling me the Haitians in America deserve American revela- uh, reparations? Yeah, they may deserve from Haiti, from the French governments and all that. But do they deserve Amer- United States American reparations for saying that they're black? So how do you classify who's black and who's not when everybody's talking about they black? So you mean tell me Drake's son who looked like the whitest kid of the whitest? That, that's what I'm that, and that baby's Canadian. We about to trade but he, places. What, but he gonna say he black, just like Sarah Rector said she was white because she had well, well, and she property. was white. But she by law she was white by status. By status she was white. She had wealth. She had oil, and she was uh, bloody black. And we're not talking about the color, color white. Oil. These things are not colors. They're classifications. Only Status. you see that's color because they're telling you you was dead for so long. Hey, so when they call we got, you black, a, we got a lot of people on your broadcast from Missouri. There's a book called The Colored Aristocracy of St. Louis. They said, and, and also I noticed this in Economy Hall of New Orleans, Louisiana. This is all King Louis, okay? French, Creole. They said in the 17th century, 18th century in St. Louis, all the Negroes spoke French. They all spoke for it, and they were all listed as white because they had wealth, they had property. Actually, what we call today, white people were their tenants, and they were the landlords. So what happened in 1776, when this newly formed United States became, everybody that was melanated and was uh, uh, aristocracy and the noble class, all of a sudden, you black, boom, your land's taken away from you, and you now indebted to the United States, and you must be a slave. 12 years, and, 50 and years. And now you're black. Now you black because you have no land. So anybody that showed uh, any allegiance to France, to Spain, to uh, England, and were blackamores, European blackamores, boom, all your wealth was gone overnight according to the newly formed United States in 1776. But our people were here in 1565. <laughs> our people were here in 1565. They were here in 1619 already. They were here in 1780. And so this whole new, this United States is fairly new concept, okay? So I hope that makes sense. I hope to your, this, hopefully this is something that will bring you all together. Hopefully this is something that instead of y'all having a family union, y'all talking about what the Dodgers did or the Lakers did or what LeBron doing. Instead of y'all talking about Steph Curry and the Dallas Cowboys. Instead of y'all talking about sports, y'all need to start, somebody needs to start breaking out some family records at these family reunions. What y'all doing at Christmas? What y'all doing at Thanksgiving? Besides eating and talking about sports or shit that really don't matter. Somebody needs to be putting some documents. Somebody needs to be sitting down to grandbabies and telling them stories about what life was like. Somebody needs to be recording grandma. Somebody needs to be uh, TikToking uh, your mm-hmm. elders. Mm-hmm. Sit down and just and, and serious shit, not no yeah. play play shit. Grandma, uh, grandma, hey grandma, wh- wh- where'd your family come from? Where'd your family grow up at? Oh, do you remember your grandma's name? Do you remember your mother's name? Do you remember your father's name? Do you remember her father's name? Grandma, where are you? Did they own some land? Yeah, what street name? Sometimes, like, I asked my dad, I said, you said the family was born in Georgia. I said, you said the family was born in Georgia. He said, yeah, but Mississippi at the time was called Georgia. I said, well, they said the name was Bunk. He said, no, it was Buck. So just little discrepancies like that will help you over here looking for bunk. I'm looking for bunk, bunk, bunk. I'm like, nigga, Rufus Buck. Like we thought our mama, was, we thought our mama was born in Texas. So if our kids was, was doing this journey, like, <laughs> oh god, years now, they, they said they didn't say Priscilla because she's born in Texas, but we had to put a long form birth certificate, and then we found out our mama was born in Kansas. Where did we go? We went straight to Topeka, got her long form birth certificate, got her death certificate because she died at KU Hospital, and that was in Kansas. We killed two birds with one stone. My little sister, she was born in Kansas. We said, oh, while we here, Shana, let's get Shana's birth certificate. Wichita, Kansas. Wichita, Kansas. Sean was born in Wichita, Kansas. We was able to go to Topeka, get my mama's death certificate, her birth certificate, Shauna's birth certificate, went to Jefferson City, got my birth certificate, Shauna's death certificate, Shai's and, my, and the kids and everybody. So Because not every state is going to do online records. Yeah. Some states are like, you got to come in. Especially, we did this during COVID. We were doing this during COVID. It yeah, was you tough. have the ancestors that go back before 1870 to get reparations in America. Only black Americans would. Oh, I can answer that. So California has a rep. Can they see me? Rep- okay, good. California has a reparations force, and California wasn't necessarily a slave state when it entered the union. So, but they just trying to figure out a, st- a proposal. So look up HR forty bill HR forty House of Representatives is sitting in the House right now. Everybody needs to be calling their congressional uh, representative in the House, and you need to be calling your senator and saying, "Where do you stand on HR 40? Call whoever is your delegate in the House of Representatives. 
tell them to vote yes on HR 40 so we can study. It's a bill to study for reparations proposals. Now, first things first, a lot of the Africans are like, oh, we about to get our reparation. And then she the, said Chief John Janice on YouTube helps people find their land record and help them. OK, but I was in the middle of the story. So real quick, this is for other people that whether you're Indian or not, you need to get your genealogical record. Yeah. So the Africans coming in, the, all the diaspora wars were basically stating that they felt like they were entitled to reparations, too. And then this is where the reparation task force got to work and said, this is for anybody before 1969. I think they need to cut off in 1969. But if you had ancestors in the United States that were listed as black or, or you today is black and you had ancestors 